You're listening to the Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. At least I'm not the red to your green, and I won't be able to tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <sighs> we need to talk about uh, something we missed last week. Oh, no. Uh, Kurt Angle in the Hall of Fame. That's good. I mean, I know one of the biggest things I saw, because I was talking about it with a friend of mine, is they didn't mention any TNA, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Wh- Surprising. Like, what? Yeah, surprise! He's been there more than he's been in WWE. Problem is, they don't own that footage, though. No, that is true. So they can't really mention it. They're not going to mention stuff they don't own. That's a good point. And they're not going to mention that he beat Brock Lesnar in Japan. Nope. Who inducts Kurt? Because I'm hearing it might um, be Austin. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm hearing Angle wants Austin to do it. As long as it's not Shane, because then we have to hear it. Charismaless induction speech, not, not uh, speech, introduction. Yeah, um, I think Austin would be fine. I, I know Kurt wants yeah. it to be Austin, so which is and, fine. And on that note, on that note, <laughs> which was oh yeah, um, yeah, that's it, huh? Nothing else. Say, what else was there? Say, nothing else. Uh, TNA will be taping again March second through the ninth. Oh uh, yeah. Which means one of those shows will probably be live. True. Live-ish. <laughs> yes, as we always call it, because yeah. they don't really do live. Yeah. In any event, speaking of something that wasn't live. Let's get to Genesis. Was very good, that was very good. Genesis? <laughs> it does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> Against all odds. Oh, wait, that's a one night only now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is still a song from the band Genesis, so. Yep. It works. So we begin with the Broken Hardies, and we get an appearance from King Maxwell. Very I brief wonder if appearance. Rappi can give him piano lessons eventually, and he'll be alone playing the piano. Well, there are you do see him at times <laughs> playing a little piano. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, basically Matt talks about how this is being Genesis, and he's like, Hey, Jeff, you got the briefcase? It's yours? You, you know, basically not including himself in the uh, winning briefcase. So he says, do you have any information to deful- divulge? And he's like, it's time for Jeff. Maybe it's time for Jeffrey Nero Hardy to be world champion again. But Matt, what are, I want to know what the deities have given. If you've get the deities have given you any information first. And Matt says, I have had a premonition that team after team and title after title. And they started the tag team revolution like never before. He must revert to his Egyptian roots, become the king of gold, and they must gain every piece of the gold that there is. Well, they've already got TNA. Where can they go next? Well, they've got a few other tag titles, I believe. Yep. Like, I think they won the WCPW ones. Yep, and Cody Rhodes has the title there, too. Yeah. Or Cody. So, Cody. Commander Cody. The DCC's music plays, and the trio makes their way to the ring. Storm says... I know something about revolution. Yeah, and th- the only revolution you have to worry about is in the form of the DCC. And I'm like, Storm, please don't remind us of the stupid revolution stable and... Where you ran Mickey James out the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where you, where you pushed Mickey James to a train. Yeah. <laughs> Which was the highlight of that. And just to build a feud with Magnus where you won for some reason. And your death crew council are jobbers. Are, have not been that have not been that good. I've basically been wasted. Yeah. And we get the K with their generic music. With their new music, yeah. Sixteenth who is now having a balding spot. Although I think he's had that. I just noticed it. <laughs> um did Josh called the Decay the Suicide Squad. <sighs> Shut up, thanks Josh. for a comic book reference. Josh. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for a late one, by the way. That movie's been out since several months ago. Ugh. Josh, shut up, Josh. So yeah, shut up, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> um. So basically, Decay wants a triple threat match. Kill two birds with one stone. DCC says, "Oh, we're okay with that." And the Broken Door said, "We'll let it be." Are they going to start singing the Beatles now? I don't know. Well, he said, let let it happen, or whatever. Let it happen, okay. 
I don't know what he's he's down with it basically. So triple threat match to start off the show. It's a good this match. Was, it was de- the weird he's- thing is that um the ending um happened. Uh oh yeah. Br- oh no, there was a weird spit where Jeff Hardy landed on top of Bram mm. and the ref decided not to cover the pit the cover call count the Who pin. Who was the ref? The Earl Hebner? I think it was Brian. Oh, it's one of them. Yeah. One of the Hebners. Yeah. Just did not count the pin, even though Jeff was on top of Bram. Um, was, he he not bit... le- was Jeff not legal? No, both were legal. He was doing a double count out instead. He was counting him out instead for, for whatever Were they reason. on the floor? Well, Jeff's head was on Bram. That okay. counts. TNA needs some new teams, by the way. Yeah, they do. Um, Crazy Steve missed Kingston, and Matt hits him with a twist of fate, so the Hardys retain the belts. Get Drew some more t- depth to your tag division, TNA. Yeah. So Drew tells the cameraman that phase two of his plan with the grand title will be tonight, but if I can give you a little spoiler, it's going to be defended. Okay. So Braxton's hanging with Laurel, and Laurel Ugh. gets a selfie with him, and they're having a dinner date. Uh, she uh, she says, we, we get a bottle of wine, and, and Braxton says, get ten. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Sutter, unless Aaron Rex is around, you don't need alcohol. <laughs> Although He might if he's hanging out with, his Laure- with Laurel. That is true. <laughs> uh, so here comes Drew Galloway, and he calls himself the personification of pro wrestling and the chosen one, and he's issuing an open challenge. And Moose answers. And unlike Aaron Rex, Galloway seems fine with this. Galloway's like, oh, Moose, you want to accept? Go ahead. Go to a commercial break, and we see that fucking awful TurboTax commercial. Yep. Moose basically hits a moose salt, which is a moon salt. But I think Josh called it a moose salt. Basically, moose power bombs Drew onto the apron, and Drew's outside for the rest of the match. So moose gets in the ring. Moose wins by a unanimous decision, round one. Uh, Galloway looked like he was going to leave, but he returns to the ring for round two. Go to hell by moose. Drew kicked out at two. The crowd is split between moose and Galloway. Moose hits Galloway with the game changer, but. While falling, Drew's leg hits Moose in the groin, and the ref's like, docking him a point, point, point. Drew hits a Claymore, but Moose kicks out. Moose pushes Drew in front of the ref. Well, actually, Moose pushes Drew to the ref, yeah. Um, ref is down, Drew low blows Moose, and hits the future shock for the win. What did you think of it? It was fine. Um... I mean, we know where it's going here in the next couple of weeks because Drew didn't resign, but he didn't. I don't think so. No. Oh uh, shit. Ah uh, well. Uh, anyway, uh, we join Laurel and Braxton back in their dinner. Laurel talks about how her daddy got her in TNA, and with her talking, Braxton is annoyed. Laurel forgives Braxton for trading Allie, and Braxton is just gulping down the wine bottle. Completely <laughs> oblivious. He's not paying attention. Yeah, he does not care. Oh, by the way, I missed another thing about uh, Drew Galloway. He was playing the rising theme instead yeah, of the his old. Remember, rising up. Oh, yeah. yeah, he they played that theme. So then we had to go to got to the best match of the night, Monsters Ball, knockout for the knockout title and. Holy shit, this match. Yep. Uh, Rosemary, Jade attacked Rosemary at the beginning, but uh, Rosemary took care of her, got in the ring, and then brought a trash can full of weapons. Uh, hit her with the trash can lids to the back, and then starts caning her, and then brings out the thumbtacks. Jade gets the advantage, and Jade takes her belt off, and <laughs> looks like actual shots of hitting with the belt. You know, to the woodshed. Oh, boy. So, Jay threw a trash can onto Rosemary because she was about to do something on the top rope and, or, or something. Uh, and German suplexes her onto the thumbtacks. And, and I want people to understand Rosemary doesn't hit the thumbtacks on her back at all. 
The thumbtacks hit her on the back of the head. Ew. They don't hit her back at all. She got of them all on the back of her head. Basically, uh, goes for the, Jade goes for the pin, two count. Rosemary tried the miss, but Jade blocked it with the trash can, tossed it to, uh, Rosemary and kicked her in the face with it. Van Daminator! Yeah, well, well, not really a Van Daminator, she just did a big boot. So, basically, uh, another two count. Rosemary at some point brought in the barbed wire board. And the last person to hit woman to hit that was Daphne, so that's not a good <laughs> uh and Rosemary gets driven into the barbed wire board but kicks out it too. Then Jay does something I have never seen and probably do not want to ever see again. Well, probably with Abyss happens, but yeah, someone like Rosemary should not be taking this spot. Jade lays the barbed wire board with the barbed wire on to Rosemary, and then Moon salts the board. Yeah. So basically, yep, all that, and by God, Rosemary did not bleed at all. This meant wow. Rosemary's about to try something on the top row, but, I mean, Jade is trying to top row, but uh, Rosemary super flexes Jade onto a setup table and gets the three count. Uh, Rosemary was like the John Cena in this match. Yep. Which is fine because she hasn't been, she's gotta be built as a super heel. And it's not like it's Gail Kim. Speaking of which, Gail Kim comes out to check out Jade. And she gets misted. Yeah. And the crowd was actually okay with this. They're sick of Gail Kim. Yes, they are. Thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> this match had the highest amount of violence with the least amount of blood if you talk to Bot Spot about it. And it proving you don't need blood in a hardcore match to be good. So, back to <laughs> freaking Laura Van Ness and Braxton. These are the Braxton. only bad things on the show with these Braxton and Laurel segments. She says this is her second best date, probably his best date, next to the doctor or, lawyer or whatever. Much. He was rich. He was rich. Uh, I'm gonna invite you, I'm gonna, you can go back to my place, your, or your place, but my place is better. But Braxton's like, I'm just gonna get the check. <laughs> no action for Braxton. So, no, Braxton don't want any action with this woman. It's obvious he doesn't want any action. He, he's just not that into you. Yeah, he is annoying. There is a point where you're too annoying to be sexy anymore. And that happens. So, Laurel calls Maria, tell her how great it's going. Oblivious. To, oblivious to how terrible it actually is. Although everybody just, else watching realizes how terrible it actually is going. Yeah. So we get a video package of Caleb Conley. Yes. I like this the, guy. Yeah. One of the biggest things, he was conceived at the Great American Bash Tour back in the day. That's got to be like wrestling's very the being conceived at Woodstock. I know. <laughs> so he's saying he's going to win the X Division title tonight. So we're going to have a five-way X Division title match and Rocket, Lee, and Everett all get jobber entrances while Conley and DJZ get actual ones. And dear God, DJZ, what the hell did you do to your hair? Oh, this he, is back to formulate like old school TNA booking with just stuffing all the other guys in one match. Yeah, I, I just want I, I'm so distracted by DJZ's hair. It looks like you have you seen that commercial where uh, Tiki Barber's a uh, actual barber? Maybe. And the. Where he just basically goes hot hot and he just cuts a piece of hair off these guys. Like, does a whole line of hair gone. It, it basically it looked like Tiki Barber had cut his hair. Yeah. And there's a very interesting spot that happened here. Um, who is, I'm trying to figure out what, Andrew Everett's on the ropes. Caleb Conley's trying to give him an elevated DDT, but... Trevor Lee's got him in a looks for a reverse DDT, and then Marsh Rockets putting a reverse DDT <laughs> prepare, prepping for a reverse DDT on freaking <laughs> Trevor Lee and DJZ <laughs> neck breakers, <laughs> uh, neck breakers tre Marsh Rockets. So all of them get hit. It's a rather weird five way move. And I was chanting, still chanting, fire your barber. 
Because seriously, I'm that... your barber. So DJZ, there's some dissension between Everett and Lee. DJZ uses this to an advantage and hits the ZDT on uh, Everett for the win. But Lee s- hits him with the steel chair, beats him down, wraps a steel chair around his ankle, and hits another steel chair onto that to several times, the basically old, crushing old, his ankle. And the, uh, I think the old, next, uh, what is it, the pillmanizer spot on Yeah, pillmanizing him. Yeah, so, and the way he looks with the smile on his face, you know what's going to happen next week with his open fight night. Yep. You know what he's going to do. Yep. Oh, by the way, Andrew Everett did a barrel roll onto people outside for some reason. <laughs> oh, Andrew Everett. Yeah, during the match. Uh, backstage, yeah, the Hardys. With the Hardys. Yeah, were <laughs> Matt Hardy showing them. And this was actually kind of interesting. Where Vanguard 1 shows him several options. Like, the GJZ spot monkey? That would just get me back to my addiction. Rosemary? No, I don't want to go back to hell. <laughs> so, so, Eddie Edwards? Hmm. The world champion? Hmm, I'll think about that. Oh, and oh, Ricky Morton was somewhere in there. He's too close to, he- to close to heaven. There was Ricky Morton in there, I remember He's that. still on that forklift from Total Nonstop Deletion? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> they haven't gotten him down from the cherry picker. <laughs> I'll just leave him up there. So, main event time as we get a 30-minute Iron Man match between good. Really Franklin good. and Edwards. Only problem, actually there was a few problems, uh, some of which the commentary, but uh, Franklin, uh, the clock is invisible through most of the match. Yep. And you have to keep track, because the scorecard's not up there. If, if there's a pin happen, they'll... S- Put the score up there, but that's about it. You don't see it through the rest of the match. It really seemed kind of rinky-dink. They, can't, they still can't afford the luxuries. Yeah, certain luxuries they can't. So, Franklin hit him with a... Hit, uh, I didn't know what it was. I missed this, but apparently hit him with a spear. Yep. So, Franklin wins one... Leads not one nothing. Then he gets on offense... And basically, he goes up two nothing because of a certain spot. I'm gonna he belly to belly suplexes uh, Eddie out of the ring, which that must have been horrible. <laughs> and then power bombs him onto the aisle. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. He and, and this is not just a regular power bomb to the ring. It looks like it hurts. Looks this like is not a protected. A little bit. Yeah, this looks like a like he might have jackknifed him here, just dropped him. The fuck you, power bomb. Yeah, the fuck you. Yeah, the the, the fuck you, power bomb. Yeah, you're. So basically, Eddie is unable to get back to the ring at ten. So he's not even able to get up really. So te- he get at, at Franklin's up to nothing, and Franklin surprisingly is about to be up three nothing because. Eddie's about to get counted out again, but Franklin stops the count. Why would you do that? I don't know. And I, and I seriously was like, uh, dude. They're about to be up 3 nothing, and you haven't really done to, much. Yeah, after you exposed the turnbuckle, um, with 15 minutes left, you could have been up 3 nothing. He wasn't going to get in the ring. If even if the crowd's chanting at this point, it's too easy, or I think that's what they said. So... Franklin goes for a spear, misses, hits the exposed turnbuckle. Eddie rolls him up for the three, so it's down to to one. Eddie hits Franklin on the outside with the Boston knee party. And despite this, both guys get in the ring at the same time. So really not making... So dual chance from the crowd. Boston knee party again, and Eddie ties things up. Yep. Franklin hits a spear, but Eddie kicks out. Boston knee party. Franklin kicks out. Uh, Eddie tries for a reverse hurricanrana, but Franklin uh, power bombs him and then does a head and arm choke, or as someone originally called it, a head arm trap. I think it's probably Josh. Yeah, they Josh. Also this is like only the 
And Josh even also said with with Edward, by the way, um, talked about how there's no champions advantage in match, and I'm like, what? He ties this. He wins. He retains. Yep. So now Lashley's on the uh, Franklin's on the outside. Pope says, "Get back in that ring," and says something extremely stupid. He's like, "Well, I, I want Franklin to win this match clean." And Josh is like, "Well, he has won it clean. He could just stay on the outside." And why don't you fight fair? You don't win the match clean. Win it clean. And he's like, "He's done that. He's up three two clean with less than a minute left. He's winning clean." Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's doing the right thing. But no, Franklin's got to get back in the ring. Tries for a spear, misses. Well, actually, kind of hits it, but Eddie ba- ta- uh, puts him in a guillotine, but I would like to say they called it something else. It looks like an anaconda device almost. Well, no, that was uh, that was Franklin's move. Uh, this was a guillotine choke. Franklin's was more of a gil- anaconda device, but uh, this was a gil- complete guillotine. Um Franklin just would not tap, um, and and this is where the referee also had issues because one, this takes you know it, it, this whole thing like takes three seconds, but there's 15 seconds left on the clock, so freaking Hebner here has to slowly do it, and don't e- after two don't even bother because he doesn't even go for the third time. Well, actually, I think he does, but uh, Franklin would not get the arm down. Which normally would break that clock, but time out. Franklin's the new world champion, and Eddie's disappointed. Franklin is happy, smiling, and thank God they got the title off Eddie Edwards. Thank God. So oh, overall, I, I gave this show an A. Yeah, this is a good show. Really good show. This was the two um, matches that you had announced already alone that was going to be a good show. Yeah, we were just worried they might find ways to screw it up yes with like with aaron rex which thankfully i did not have to break the alcohol out for oh we've got we've got another aaron rex appearance in a couple of weeks. i know <laughs> and looking at the spoilers for um open fight night i'm not looking forward to it because uh-huh. i'm gonna spoil this right now two guys who won briefcases did not challenge champions mm. which is stupid you would think you'd do that. I know who it is too. It's the DCC guys. And uh and Eli Drake. And that's three. No, I said two I said two briefcases. The other two got briefcases, challenge champions. Mm-hmm. So well you'll get that next week. Um overall this was a really good show. Best since two thousand fifteen, which the last one was the Spud E C three battle. Oh yeah, that one from England. Yeah. That was a really good one. Hair, hair. So that that's it for the show. Um, do you have anything to sell? Not tonight. Um, I actually do. Um, I did not realize this last week, but I do did have to announce an induction poll to uh basically for the February because I normally do that. I normally get the poll done before I do my first induction, and uh, so here are the nominees. Uh. Night of the Living Dead 3D. Oh, a 3D of that movie. Uh, Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes. How many pumpkin heads did they make? They made four. Okay. Um, this is the third one. Um, the Unholy. Sounds like, uh... Earth like vs. Uh, Spider. What's The Unholy about? Uh... It sounds like an exorcism movie. It's kind of an exorcism movie, kind of. It does have a priest in it. So, Earth vs. the Spider. Um, Bloodsuckers, a.k.a. Vampire Wars Battle for the Universe. Yes, vampires in space. <laughs> because the last time I did this was Dracula 3000, and that film sucked. Oh, God. Devil Dog, the Hound from Hell. Not the, not the, not the snack food. Nope. Uh, Time it's... Walker. Gamer vs. Virus. Zombies of Mora Tau. And The Grudge 2. Yep. I'm going to look at the poll right now, and we've... Right now, it looks like we got a tie, a four-way tie, between The Grudge 2, Time Walker, Devil Dog, and Night of the Living Dead 3D. Yep. With Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes, 
in second place with two votes. Ah. <laughs> so it's going to be a really tough one, this poll, because it looks like it's going to be really close. And the uh, poll closes on Saturday at 12 a.m. midnight. So the first minute of Saturday. Yep. So with that said, uh, Miley, we have to go to bed. Good night, folks.